Hello everyone, today I have this, which as you can see is some Crayola Air Dry Clay, and I'm going to be using this to create a very interesting project. You might have already seen it on my shorts, but I'm going to be making a pizza tic-tac-toe using that and these clay tools that look kind of dangerous, but let's see what we can create. Let's open this up and struggle. And now let's see what we can create. Like and subscribe and let's go. Just diving right in here, just grabbing a big handful chunk of clay. I have no idea how much I'm actually going to need because I am an amateur clay artist and I do not use this very often. I have no idea the last time I used clay was, probably to make those cute little average clay animals. But now here I am trying out a new thing. So I added even more clay in, ruined all of my work, but right now I'm just trying to create a smooth, even surface. I don't have a clay rolling pin for this, which I really could have used but I'm just using my hands to try and make this as flat and even as possible. I want to be able to carve it out into a circle, so for now I'm just trying to work with it and make it flat and smooth, and once I got it smooth enough, I then went ahead in with my bowl, and I'm just tracing around it with this sharp looking needle tool, and going ahead and just creating a circle. It's stuck to the bowl, so I peeled it off, and now I have a somewhat circle that's kind of lumpy, but we're just going to flip it over and focus on this side. So I took some water and smoothed out all of the lumps and bumps not sure if this was a good idea or a good technique and now I'm going to use this extra to create a snake because I want to create a rim around my bowl and that was also going a little bit sketchy I kept tearing it because I'm not very good at working with it as you can see here it was very hard for me to keep straight and organized but then after that I used this tool to create some little indents in the clay to hopefully get this little snake to stick to the rim a little bit better so then I just went ahead and plopped it on, broke it again, and just kept on going with it. I tried really hard to just make it all neat and fit to the edge and not worry too much about it. Like I said, I'm an amateur, so that's what I'm going for. And now I took this tool and tried to smooth out the clay to really make sure that it stuck and was secure. I think I improved upon my technique a little bit here. And then I decided to take some water and smooth out all of the edges so it didn't look like a shark bit into it. I used this tool to kind of smooth out and even out the edges, and then I used a lot of water, time, and patience to really try to get a smooth edge around this entire thing, but I kind of ended up making the snake wall disappear completely. But anyway, now it's time to create even more snakes for the inside part, which is going to be the tic-tac-toe lines. But first, I wanted to map it all out, so I tried to use these squares, which really weren't so helpful but I decided just to use them as kind of a guideline to see where I should put my tic-tac-toe boxes to keep them all nice and even, and then just sketched out some lines in there to remember where they were supposed to go, and now I can attach my little snakes that I created for the tic-tac-toe walls. As you can tell, this process was really chaotic and took a lot more time than I thought it was going to do. My confidence was so high until I actually started this project, and it took me an hour and a half to make a circle with a vague wall and some tic-tac-toe lines in the middle of it. So... That was kind of humbling, but anyway, now here I am. I decided to bring in a paintbrush to really try to smooth everything out, and this actually worked really well, and it took a million years, but then I eventually got it really smooth, and everything started coming together, and I was actually starting to be happy with it, especially, like I said, since I am such an amateur clay artist, my main goal in this was just for everything not to fall apart, but now I'm measuring this out so I can start creating the toppings that are going to be the tic-tac-toe pieces for the pizza tic-tac-toe. Very much a tongue twister there, but here I am trying to make sure the sizing is correct. Got it wrong the first couple of times, but then I got smarter. I decided to make a paper template and then trace around it. That way they were all the same size, and also that way I could ensure that they fit onto the pizza. And then after that, I smoothed them all out, and I did this with every single one of these. I did mushrooms first for one of the tic-tac-toe pieces. Let's say these are the X's. And then for the O's, I decided to do pepperoni circles instead. That really fits with the O theme, so I think it works. And then I smoothed all of those out and cut them out as well. 
Once I finally smoothed them all out, I set them to the side and I knew that they would need a lot of drying time, so I decided to transfer all of this over to a new clean sheet, and then I had to wait for it to dry, which was three days later. And it took so long, I was trying to be super patient though, because I knew if I did it too soon, the paint would crack. But here's how it looks so far, all dry, and it looks so cool. And now it's time to go with my paints, which I am using the three primary colors, plus black and white to mix all of my paint colors and of course we're going to need some paint brushes to actually paint the pizza. So I first started off with the crust. I decided it would be the best plan of action to work from the outside and move to the inside. So I first started off by trying to make this crust color. I tried a few different colors on it to really try and get the right color and then I wanted to add in some little burnt cheese pieces so I made this dark brown and kind of put a little rim around the side. You know where the cheese might have got just a little bit crispy and then I decided to add an even lighter color on top to give it some highlights. I think it kind of washed it out, but I fix it all later. But now I'm moving on to the sauce part. So for this part, you can kind of see some pizza sauce, you know, in between all of the cheese and the crust. So I wanted it to be super visible here. So I just created a little rim that I could paint cheese over later, but I really wanted it to look like there was sauce on this pizza. I don't like a pizza that doesn't have sauce. So I really wanted to make it look like that. And then I put little stains on the pizza as well of the leftover sauce. I added in some cheesy bits now. Here I am adding in the yellow and I really just decided to create a whole base first and then add in all of the cheesy goodness textures later. So for now I just want to put a solid base down and make sure that I can get a visual and now here I am going in with some lighter colors and different shades to really get a cheesy goodness texture because we need this pizza to be extra cheesy and I even brought up these little cheese pieces into the saucy part of the pizza. Try to add in some more little saucy effects with the middle of the pizza and then I held it up to kind of see what it was really looking like and then I added in even more cheesy details to really even everything out and once I was okay with it I went ahead and started working on the pepperonis. So I'm going to go back to the pizza later but for now I'm working on creating a base layer for all of the pepperonis and all of the mushrooms and once I did that I could add in some of the details. I wanted this to look super cool and fun and detailed so I added in some black little crispy edges and then I decided to speckle them since pepperonis kind of have that speckled effect and I did two different shades of speckles to really add in the detail and then for the mushrooms I decided to also make them look like they'd been a little crispified and then I added in some highlights to them to really make them pop and look a little slimy because mushrooms kind of are a little bit of a texture you know what I'm saying you know how mushrooms are and then I decided to add in some white to the pepperoni as well because they sometimes have those little fatty pieces that are a little bit lighter and here I am going back and touching up the pizza like I said before so now that I have all of that done I finished adding in some more sauce which was kind of hard not to make look scary and then it was time to do the backs of everything so I just gave them all a nice little thin layer of paint on the back I'm not going too detailed with it just like let's ignore the back and then I'm going ahead and just doing that to all of them and now it's time to work on the back of the pizza which is actually for my mom for Mother's Day. I gave this to her for Mother's Day and her favorite color is purple so I'm going ahead and giving this a purple background and then it is complete and here is how it turned out and I think it looks so cool so I have to let it all dry but then I am going to show you the final result. So here it is and now for the final result I'm going to varnish it to protect the paint and make sure nothing comes off. This was so much hard work. This probably took a collective of like four hours to complete altogether, plus the days of waiting in between. And here's the difference the varnish makes. It just makes it so shiny and glossy and kind of look like glass. And here is the tic-tac-toe pizza in action. And here are the little toppings that make up the tic-tac-toe pizza, the pepperonis and the mushrooms. And I think they are so cute and so cool and so fun. This was such a fun project project and I am so proud of how it turned out especially since I'm such a clay amateur I even made a little pizza box for it to go in if you made it this far comment a pizza emoji let me know what you think about this and like and subscribe for new videos every Tuesday thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one let me know what you think about this and what is your favorite pizza topping